Hello, lovely beings, and welcome back to Galactic Mythology. I'm your host, Liz Grace. Today, we're diving deep into the cosmic currents that have been swirling around us over the past couple of months. Now, as I record this, it's February 16th, 2024, but I want to rewind the clock and explore the realms of January of this year and December of last. And I have one question to ask you before we begin. How have you been? I've been hearing whispers through the etheric grapevine of our community, and it seems like many of us have been navigating through different shades of darkness. Whether it's a sudden shift in perspective, a life-altering event, or the ending of a once cherished connection, something profound has stirred within us. I'm speaking to a different version of you, am I not? Well, you're certainly speaking to a different version of me. So who are we now? And what catalyzed these metamorphoses over the past two months? Well, my friends, let's cast our gaze to the stars. I've been scrutinizing the celestial movements of January 2024 and December 2023 searching for any cosmic clues behind these collective conscious blues. (laughs) Sorry, I just couldn't help myself. Among the celestial dances that have caught my eye, these were but a few that stood out to me. Them being Neptune turning direct in the first week of December of 23, joined by a powerful Mars and Sagittarius conjunction with the Sun all trining Chiron along with the North Node over there in Aries. And the dark mother goddess Eris made her presence known throughout the past months by conjuncting the North Node and opposing the South Node, gradually releasing her grip but never straying more than six degrees away throughout January. My celestial compass keeps pointing me back to the sign of Aries during these turbulent months and into today, February. Aries, the sign of new beginnings, resonates strongly with the energy of change. It's associated with our root chakra, primal instinct, without hesitation. We're in a state of fight or flight, stemming from the depths of our mammalian brainstems. There's an undeniable sense of fear permeating the air these days. And what I'm about to depict is a pretty daunting list, but it's worth acknowledging, especially for us working on creating our highest timelines. We are experiencing the effects of inflation, the specter of war, the looming threat of climate change, the turmoil of politics, both domestic and global, the threat of bills piling up, the pressures of social media, and the persistent feelings of inadequacy. We're all grappling with heightened levels of anxiety, perhaps manifesting as increased anger or frustration. We are finding ourselves collectively uncomfortable from the microcosms of our homes to the macrocosm of the world. Survival is the prevailing struggle here. We're all yearning to find a place amidst the chaos. Disillusionment hangs heavy as we witness our leaders pursuing agendas that seem at odds with the collective will, leaving us powerless. A tug of war ensues between maintaining the status quo and forging a path never traveled before. But amidst the perceived darkness, a beacon of light emerges. Chiron, the wounded healer. Chiron plays a pivotal role in the drama of the past two months. In summary, Chiron in mythology suffered from a wound that could never heal. This wound was inflicted upon him by someone he loved. Chiron carried this wound with him for centuries until he ultimately sacrificed himself for the betterment of mankind. Thank you, Chiron. 
That was an extremely abridged version of the myth, but you get the gist. Chiron is a wound we carry, and oftentimes we perceive this wound to be inflicted upon us by others. To some astrologers, Chiron is specifically linked to ancestral wounding. As in, where Chiron is in your natal chart, it could point you in the direction of where your ancestors struggled and where you can cure that suffering. What if we spin that notion out to the macrocosm? Aries and Chiron. How have we struggled as a species? And more specifically, how have we struggled as a past collective consciousness? In the age of Aries, we witness the rise of empires and the advancement of military leading to the seizure of valuable lands. It was a time of power struggles and the establishment of autocratic rule. And speaking of cosmic shifts, on January 20th, 2024, Pluto entered Aquarius, symbolizing a deep transformation of our collective sub, sub, underworld, Pluto, subconscious within the age of Aquarius. This celestial movement is significant, especially considering the north node of the moon was at 19 degrees of Aries on that same day. This alignment, coupled with Chiron's retrograde motion at 19 degrees of Aries back in July of 2023, serves as a focal point for our journey towards healing. Now, let me share with you the Chandra symbol for the 19th degree of Aries, painting a vivid mental picture and deepening our understanding of this cosmic dance. Chandra symbols, for those of you who don't know, are similar to the Sabian symbols, as in they are channeled and written symbols for each degree of the zodiac. Chandra symbols were channeled by a man named John Sandbach. And in the symbol system, we round up. So Chiron went retrograde at 19 degrees and 57 minutes of Aries. So we are going to look at the Chandra symbol for 20 degrees of Aries. An empty courtyard. Before change can happen, there must be a place prepared inside so that the new may enter. Celebration is the acknowledgement that something important has occurred and that it should be honored. But once the celebration is over, the way is clear for the next step of the journey. Blessed with the colors of the recent triumph, the confetti lying in the streets is about what is over. The empty courtyard is about what is coming. And this degree stands at the crossroads of that time of renewal, acknowledging the past and open to the future. Bringing it back to today, February 16th, 2024, when we look at Chiron, we see him hanging out very close to the North Node. Chiron will be with the North Node within two degrees for the next two months to come. Reaching peak strength February 26 at 17 degrees, five minutes. Now that we have digested the Chandra symbol for the 20th degree of Aries, shall we read the 18th degree of Aries for greater insight on the collective experience? I think so. The 18th degree of Aries, Chandra symbol. A jellyfish. The jellyfish is delicate and vulnerable, unlike the incorruptible flesh of the monk. But what the two of them share is transparency, literal on the part of the jellyfish, 
and on a higher vibrational sort on the part of the monk who has seen through the corruptibility of matter into the shining eternity of the soul, thereby uplifting, refining, and perfecting the physical self. This is not to say that everyone who possesses this degree will completely achieve this in their current lifetime, but it is to say that this degree brings the awareness of this potential, the ability to know deeply and intuitively that matter is an illusion, and this knowledge emanates a gentleness and lightness that brings peace to its surroundings. As this thought form glows within you, you inherently bear a grace and fluidity which is your strength and a subtle means of protection that others often sense and which often will ward off anyone who might try to harm you. Wow. <laughs> What I am gathering from reading those two symbols is that these past few months have been creating space for us. Thinking of the empty courtyard and the confetti. Just beautiful symbolism for the hope we all feel at the start of a new year. Whether that new year is based on the Gregorian calendar or on ancient Chinese beliefs. We also know that the sign of Aries is the start of the zodiac wheel. And the sign of Aries is also related to the energy of springtime. Though as we truly approach the age of Aquarius, our vernal equinox will begin to appear closer to the Aquarian season. The 18th degree of Aries with the jellyfish reminds me of Lumeria and the much more astral perception we had of the world during that time. The symbol speaks of the corruption of matter, the disillusionment of the physical world, and yet it also speaks of the potential to purify the physical form. And, you know, this also makes me think about a term used by Edgar Cayce, um, a renowned occultist and channel, And that term is gross matter, which is also a term used in philosophical and scientific communities to refer to the material substance of the physical observable universe. So I also think, you know, the word, the term gross matter is also a funny play on words because we are being gross when we are out of balance and obsessed with the physical world, the left brain logical way of being. (laughs) Anyways, it's just funny. Um, But what helps me understand the spiritual significance of the term gross matter is the example of our chakras. None of our chakras are literally higher or lower in a ranking sense. The root is physically lower on our spirit final column, but it is essential to the whole system. So if the root chakra becomes sick, the crown chakra will become sick. So we can see this very easily in flowers. So when the root system of a flower becomes diseased, the roots will, sorry, the flower will show a reflection of the disease stemming from the roots. So, yes, gross, icky, haha, but we need to learn to value the gross part of ourselves. Uh, We need to learn how to value the physical form and the physical reality and all its obstacles in front of us and have a certain level of nurture towards them so that we can actually integrate and deepen our individuality and support the collective. I felt inspired to create this podcast, specifically this episode, in response to my local collective and community, as in my friends and my family, and even myself. I've been observing in all of us a little bit of a dark night of the soul. And 
this is why I find astrology to be so profound and helpful. So we are all cosmically on time for a crisis. The Chiron and Aries signatures, the transits I mentioned in the earlier part of this podcast all support this energy. And since we can see it, we can witness and give ourselves a little bit of grace during these times. So we are all going to find ourselves again. And that is the beauty of losing ourselves. So I hope that this podcast has given you some sense of hope or maybe even a nice big warm hug because I think you're doing a great job. And if you are alive and conscious and watching this, then I would say that you are an individual that is willing to do the work to get to those higher dimensions, those higher realities. I would love for you to share your story with me if you feel inspired. And I hope that you join me on the next one. This is Galactic Mythology, and I am your host, Liz Grace. I'm wishing you a beautiful future, and I hope you stay cosmic, and I hope you stay conscious. Wishing you all the best. Like, comment, subscribe, share, show the algorithm that you care. Thank you. Have a good night, good day, good evening, wherever you are in the time zones.